right, welcome back everyone. I'm Nick, this is Swiftful Thinking, where we cover everything Swift and Swift UI related. And in this video, we're gonna look at caching. We're gonna create a local catch in our code so that we can save some of the data that we download from the internet in a temporary location. Now, caching is something that's used in all software development and there's a ton of different ways to implement this. Some, of course, are much more advanced than what we're doing today. But essentially, this becomes very useful when you have data that you downloaded from the internet that is important that the user might reuse while they're in your app right now, but it's not actually important enough to save it to the file manager or somewhere that it's gonna be saved forever. So this would become very handy in apps like social networking apps, when you might go to someone's profile and you need to download their profile picture. And that profile picture is obviously very important data for the current session for the user using the app right now, but chances are the user might not need that image forever. They might not go back to this profile every single day. So instead of saving that image to the file manager to make it permanent, we could just temporarily save it or really just store it temporarily in a catch. So this way, if the user goes to another screen and comes back, we already have that data, we don't need to download it again. But of course, if the user closes the app, and then reopens it, it won't be saved because it was only temporarily saved. And I know it sounds a little confusing, but do not worry because we're gonna walk through the whole process in this video. And in the next video, we're gonna actually take it to the next level. We're gonna download a ton of data from the internet and I'm gonna show you how we can actually manage that data using the file manager versus catch. All right guys, hope you're excited, I'm excited. Let's jump into Xcode and take a look. Welcome back everyone. I am back in our Xcode project, of course. Let's right click the navigator, create a new file. It's gonna be a Swift UI view as always, and let's call this one catch bootcamp. Go ahead and click create. Once you're inside, click resume on the canvas. And we're gonna actually start this video the exact same as I started the last video. So if you were with me in the last video, you can probably just copy the code from the last one, but I'm gonna go through the steps anyway for the people who are just joining. Uh, but we're gonna start out by bringing in a local image to our project. So I'm gonna open up the assets.xc assets folder. And in here, I already have my image. It's called steve-jobs. But if you don't, basically take any image from your computer. I have this on my desktop here and just drag and drop it and place it into the assets folder. And the only thing you need to make sure is that you know exactly what this name is because we're going to have to type this name in our code in one second. And again, by dragging images into this folder, we have them embedded into our app when we load the app. And that's great for certain images, but a lot of times we're going to have to download images from the internet and then we have to store them and we're going to store them in a local cache. So although we have this image already, we're going to take it and then we're just going to store it in a local cache as if we were downloading it from the internet. All right, so I'm gonna jump back into the catch bootcamp file. And now I'm gonna set up the view and I'm gonna literally do the exact same thing that we did in the last video. So if you have the file manager bootcamp and you were with me in the last video, you can just copy and paste most of that code. Uh, but I'm just gonna go through it again and type it out. If you were not with me, I'm gonna make it full screen here. Let's add a navigation view. Inside, let's add a VStack. And in the VStack, let's add an image. We'll use the name. And the name of this image is gonna be the exact name of the image in that assets folder. So mine is steve-jobs. It's a little big, so let's make it resizable. Let's make it dot scaled to fill. Let's give it a frame with a width of 200, a height of 200, and let's make it clipped, and let's add the corner radius of 10. All right, I'm gonna add a spacer underneath it just to push it to the top. On the VStack, let's add a navigation title. Let's just say catch bootcamp. And we're gonna add two buttons into this view. So let's add a button open the parentheses, let's use the action and label. We'll leave the action blank for a second and the label, this one will say save to catch. 
Let's give it a font of headline. Let's give it a foreground color of white, a background of color dot blue. Let's give it a corner radius of 10. And actually before the background, let's give it a little bit of padding. And I'm gonna hold the command button, click on this button, embed it in a uh, H stack. All right, let's tab this over. And then I'm just going to copy this button and paste another one below. The second one, we're gonna say delete from catch. Let's make the background color red because we are deleting. And that's it for now. This should look very similar because this is the same view that we did in the last video. And let's finish this off by creating a view model for this view. Let's create a class. Let's call it catch view model. It will conform to observable object. We'll open the brackets. Let's initialize one in our view. So we'll use an at state object var vm equals catch view model. Open close parentheses. And in the view model, let's just add this image. We'll say at published var. We'll call it starting image of type UI image. We'll make it optional and we'll set it equal to nil. We'll create an init. Then we'll create a function to load the image. Funk get image from assets folder. Open close parentheses, open the brackets. And in here, we're just going to set the starting image equal to a UI image named. And then we're going to use this name for our image. And I'm actually going to make it a constant. So up here in the catch view model, let's just add a let image name of type string. And we'll set it equal to Steve dash jobs. And again, this is the exact name of the image that you have in the assets folder. Let's take this image name and put it in here. And let's just call this function in our init. All right. And finally, moving back down, let's now reference this starting image. And it is optional. So let's safely unwrap it with an if let image equals vm dot starting image. Open the brackets. And if we do have this image, let's just put this inside. And of course, we're going to switch this out. We're going to open the parentheses here and use the completion with a UI image. And we'll just pass this image into here. All right, if I resume the canvas, if I still see this image, we know that this get, as get image from assets folder is working, which it looks like it is. All right, I still see it. So we are all good so far. Hope you guys are with me. So again, in your actual app, you probably would download this image from the internet and you would get to this point in your app and then you would want to save it temporarily in a catch. So we're going to take this image that we have and put it into a temporary catch. And to do that, let's create a, another class that will manage our catch. So we're going to create a class. I'll call this catch manager. Open the brackets. Let's make it a singleton by typing static let instance equals catch manager. And this here will be our singleton. And something I noticed that I probably should have been doing in the last couple of videos, um, when we create these singletons, it basically means that this is going to be the only instance of catch manager in our entire app. And while this does exactly what we wanted to do, there is nothing stopping us from actually initializing another one, right? So right now I could down here say let new manager equals catch manager. And I could initialize another one right here. So there's nothing stopping us from doing that. What we should actually be adding is a private init. So we can say private init, open close parentheses, open the brackets. And because we're making the init private, it'll basically tell Xcode that we can only initialize a catch manager within the class. So we can't actually initialize one down here. That's why we get this error. So I should have actually been typing this in every time we made a singleton so far. Um, but it's not really a big deal if we don't. So I'm just going to leave this in here and just delete some of this spacing and just leave it like that. So now you guys know how to do the private init. We'll get rid of this. Let's actually reference this instance in our class. So here we'll say let manager equals 
catch manager dot instance. All right, and now in our catch manager, of course, we need to create a local catch. So we're going to create a var. We'll call it image catch of type ns catch. And then we're going to get this error message here. And it's basically telling us that when we create an ns catch, we need to tell it explicitly what type of objects we're going to be putting inside. So we're going to click fix here. And this works just like a dictionary. So it's going to be the key and the value. And the key is going to be the identifier for each item that we save. So we're going to use just the name of the image. So this will be a string. However, we're going to get a quick error message here. And that's because we're in an NS catch and NS stands for next step. Basically, it was a programming language way back in the day before Swift was around before I think even Objective C was around. And so an NS catch doesn't know what type string is. Uh, but to fix this, all we need to do is add NS string and the errors go away. It's that simple. And then here we add what type of object we're going to be storing in this catch. Now, when we store images, we're going to store UI images here. I've seen other people when they store images, they actually convert them to data and then store the data here. But we're going to keep it simple and just store the image. And this is going to be a computed property. So we're actually going to set it equal to, and then we're going to open the brackets. And at the end of this brackets, we will open and close the parentheses to initialize it. And in here, we just need to and create and return an NS catch. So we'll say let catch equals NS catch. And I'm just going to copy the line above NS string comma UI image. And then we're just going to open and close the parentheses to initialize a new one. We're then going to return this catch. The error should go away. And the reason we are even doing this computing is so that we can customize this catch a little bit before returning it. And there's two ways we can customize this. We can first say catch dot count limit. And this is the maximum number of objects the catch can hold. So if we wanted to keep this small, we could set it equal to maybe 10. I'm going to set it equal to 100 for now. Obviously, in this demo, we only have one image, so this is kind of irrelevant. Um, but the reason we set this is because when we store any kind of data in this local catch, it's going to store it in the memory of the device. And generally speaking, we want to keep the memory as low as possible because because if the memory gets too high, we could run into issues with uh, the app freezing or even crashing. There are safeguards like the catch would probably empty before your app would crash. But generally speaking, it is a good idea to put a count limit on your catch. And we can also do catch dot total cost limit. And this is the total cost that the catch can hold before it starts evicting objects. And uh, this is basically how much data we can put into the catch. And I'm going to set this equal to 1024 by 1024 times 100, which I think is about 100 megabytes. I could be wrong, but essentially this is the total amount of data for all these images that we put into the catch. And the reason this is so efficient is because if we go to add another item that it that is going to exceed the count limit or the total cost limit, the catch will actually empty out old items in the catch for us and then just take in the new item. So it's pretty efficient and definitely handy for us as developers. And again, all this NS catch is doing is just holding the images. So we're going to put images in and then we're going to take images out. Let's create a func to add the items to the catch. We'll say func add. And of course, we want to pass in the image of type UI image. And we need the name. So we'll say name of type string. We'll open the brackets here. And it's as simple as calling image catch, which is this image catch we just set up, dot set object. And here it is looking for a UI image. And that's because we set this type to UI image. So we'll pass in our image and for key. And the key needs to be of type NS string. So we can take our name, which is just a current, a regular string, and we can just cast it as a NS string. And we, the reason we can do this is because Xcode knows that strings and NS strings are essentially the same thing. And that's why we can cast them as NS strings. It's that simple to add it to the image catch. And let's just print out here, added to catch. Let's add another function to remove it from the catch. We'll say func remove. 
And when we go to remove it, we're going to need to know what the key value is, what the string is, which is basically the name. So we'll add the name here of type string. We'll open the brackets. And to remove from the catch, all we need to do is call it image catch dot remove object. It's going to say for key. And of course, this is the name as NS string. Down here, let's just print removed from catch. And let's create one more function to get it from the catch while it's saved. We'll say func, we'll say get. And again, we're gonna need to know what the what the key is. So that will be the name of type string. And we want this to return us a UI image, but it has to be optional in case we can't actually get it in case it's not in the catch. So we'll open the brackets. And here we can simply return the image catch dot object for key. And the key of course is the name as NS string. So this is actually pretty simple code. Let's add it into our app now. So scrolling down in our view model, I want to add functions to reference these catch functions up here. So we're going to add func uh, save to catch, open close parentheses, open the brackets. And to save to catch, we call manager and we'll call dot add. That's the function we just made. And we're going to pass in the starting image, which is optional. So let's first unwrap it. We'll say guard let image equals starting image else return. Let's take that image, pass it in. And of course, the name is the image name, the variable up here. Let's create another one, func remove from catch. Open close parentheses, open brackets. Here we're going to call manager dot uh, remove and the name again is the image name and one more we'll call func get from catch open close parentheses open brackets and, he and here we're going to get an image but we actually don't have a variable to save it to because I want to separate the starting image from this returned image so let's create another at published var Let's say catched image of type UI image, make it optional and we'll set it equal to nil. And in this function down here, we'll say catched image equals manager dot get. This is our function to get the image and we'll pass in the image name. All right, going down into our view now, when we click the save to catch, we will call VM, which is our view model dot what do we call it? Uh, save to catch. And then in our delete button, we'll say VM dot uh, remove from catch. And we don't have anywhere to actually get from the catch when it's saved. So let's add one more button. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it below the H stack. Let's say get from catch. Let's make this one green. Here we're going to call VM dot get from catch. And if we get from catch, remember we created the second published variable. So let's just put another image at the bottom. So I'm going to copy this first image that we have up here, the same code. I'm just going to put it at the bottom. And this will be vm.catched image. So I hope you're still with me. This is pretty simple code compared to what we've been doing in the last couple of videos. Um, I know we added these print statements, but we're just going to run on the simulator, so we're not going to get the print statements, but hopefully we can save it to the catch. I'm going to run the simulator. Let's save to catch. And now that it's in the catch, we should be able to get it from the catch. And let's click get from catch, and we now have it. And if I click delete from catch, it should remove it. And now if I try to get it again, it should be removed. Beautiful. All right, so it looks like it's working. It looks like you guys understand the catch. I'm going to add a little bit of text onto the screen here just so we can get some feedback on what's going on. So let's make this add function return a string. And we'll just return added to catch. Let's make remove also return a string. Here we will return removed from catch. And this get function is returning an optional image, so let's just handle that when we return it. 
So coming down into the view model, let's add one more at published var. We'll say info message of type string. Set it equal to a blank string for now. And when we call save to catch, we're going to say info message equals the result of that. Again, for remove catch, we'll say info message equals the result. And then when we call get from catch, this is actually returning us an optional image. So in here, let's say if let returned image equals manager dot get image name. So if we do get the image, we'll say catched image equal to returned image. And if this is successful, we'll say info message equals and we'll set it equal to got image from catch. Then we'll say else. So if we couldn't get it from the catch, we'll say info message equals image not found in catch. Let's delete this line down here. And finally, back down on our screen here, I'm going to put uh, some text. Let's put it above this h stack. Text will say vm dot info message. Let's make it dot font of headline. Let's give it a foreground color of purple. And let's resume this one more time just to check it out. We should now have a little bit of feedback. And when we save it to the catch, we can add it to the catch. We can delete it from the catch. It's removed. If I try to get it from the catch while it's not in it, we should get image not found. If I save it and then we get the image, got image from catch. So this is all working perfectly. And it's a little hard to understand in this video uh, why we are using the catch, I know, because we already had the image. But in the next video, we're going to catch a whole bunch of images that we downloaded from the internet and it will make a lot more sense. Uh, but essentially what we need to realize here is that when we have any kind of data, but it's especially relevant for images, when we download them from the internet, if we don't want to save them permanently to the file manager or to core data or something like that, we can add a catch like this. And this is basically just a temporary variable here where we are storing a bunch of images. So if we downloaded this image from the internet and we threw it into the catch and then we went to another screen and then maybe the user came back to this screen, instead of just immediately downloading from the internet, we could first check this catch and see if we already had an image with this name. And if we had an image with this name, then we would just use this local image and not download it again. But if, of course, it wasn't in the catch, we would then go and download it. And that would end up making our app much more efficient. It would save us a lot of download time and data. And overall, it's just super useful. And before we end this video, I just want to point out that there are much more advanced ways to do this catching. This is a very simple beginner level catch. And I've seen some people prefer to, instead of catching an image, they might catch data. Some people like to take this catch and save all of these items into core data. Um, there's also a ton of third party libraries that will do catching much more efficiently than this for you. Um, but for this video and this course, being able to just catch like this is a big step forward in making your app super efficient. All right, everyone. Thank you guys for watching. Sorry if this was a lot of setup and not a lot of results, but in the next video, we're going to put this to use and you're going to see why I covered it and why it is so popular and common in production apps. Thank you guys for watching. As always, I'm Nick. This is Swiffle Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.